Hello, everyone, and welcome to Papa Hector's podcast. So, in today's episode, we're going to discuss spiritual purpose and intent and the spiritual work. And we're going to cover it in two sides. Part A, spiritual intent and purpose when it comes to yourself, and spiritual work and intent when it comes to doing work for others or helping other individuals. So before we get into that, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to us on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. We're also on uh, YouTube. Look me up, Hungan Hector, Voodoo Hungan. And if you check me out on my blog, www.hectorsalva.com, you can sign up for my newsletter where we keep you up to date with everything that's going on. All right, so let's start off with spiritual purpose and intent when it comes to doing your spiritual work. What is the spiritual purpose? What is your purpose or intent in doing your spiritual work for yourself? And purpose and intent is something that a lot of people talk lots about. Okay? Meaning, it's a word, there are words that get dropped here and dropped there, but a lot of times no one really defines what that is. And I'm going to give you the simple answer. It's going to be so simple, it's going to be like, what do you mean? Your purpose, okay, is to serve the spirits. Your intent should be, okay, to serve your purpose, which is to serve the spirits. Now, I'm going to toss you out a Papa Hectorism. That means it's a saying that I say. <clears throat> And this Papa Hectorism says that only a God can truly serve a God. What I mean by that is if you're not working on developing your spiritual capacities, your abilities, going through the proper ceremonies, rituals, training, etc. that you need to do to unravel and develop your power, then you're not bringing yourself to the point to be able to really serve your purpose and really serve the mysteries. To serve the mysteries, you got to come correct. You got to be able to come clean, clear, and correct. Very few people can. You cannot serve. You cannot draw forward a mystery that is the force that is way purer than yourself if you're not in alignment and if you're not pure to a certain extent. Okay? The force that draws to you is at the same level of purity and power that you are at. Meaning, if you are not very developed, okay, the piece of force that you're going to have come to you, the amount of force that's going to come to you, is going to manifest in that way. Many people want to skip over this process. But you can't truly say that you're serving the spirits if you aren't prepared to serve the spirits. Prepared mind, heart, body, and soul. It's a full process. And if one part or another is missing from that process and you're not completing that for whatever reason, then you're not truly working towards serving your purpose. Okay, because to serve your purpose, you have to be capable of serving your purpose. That's something really you want to think about. To serve your purpose, you need to be capable of serving that purpose. Many people, just like your physical muscles have developed over your lifetime from you using them, Most people do not have very developed spiritual muscles, okay, because they haven't worked on them, they haven't developed them, they haven't done the training, 
just like your eye, your arms, everything is trained to be able to make certain movements and functions and for you to have that level of control, they haven't done that. So you can't truly serve the highest good. You can't truly serve the highest piece of the force. You can't unravel the full capacity or power of that force. When you're serving for yourself, your intent of serving the spirits serves you. So when you're doing all of this, your life is going to be improving. If you're doing it, you're doing it well and you're doing it right under the pri proper guidance and mentorship. Okay? A lot of people, I'm going to hit you with something, a hard hidden truth here, is a lot of people want to claim the titles, a lot of people want to go through the rituals and ceremonies, but very few of those people have the powers unraveled and developed. To me, your title means nothing. To me, the rituals you've undergone mean nothing. It means about a drop in the bucket of what it takes for you to serve the purpose, which is to serve the spirits properly. If you ran off and you had some initiations, some ceremonies, and you've read some things and you know some things from my website and other people's websites and some books, okay, and now you carry some type of title because of that, that title is empty. You're not fully prepared to serve the spirits. This is why in our cultures, in Vodou-based, mystery-based cultures, you have the priests, and priests are few and far between. Why? Because it takes a lot of work for the priests to be prepared to serve the spirits. Doing magic is not serving the spirits. Doing magic is the spirit serving you. Is the spirit serving people. To truly serve the spirits, you're a vessel of the spirits. You're constantly doing what the spirit wants. You're moving with the spirit. It's the spirit that moves you. You're in total alignment with the spirit. As someone I would say, would say in Creole, que ampil mun kife bizango di yogine. Lots of people saying they practice Gine, but they're practicing Bizango. Okay. And if you're not a Gine, you're not going to understand what that means. If you don't know what it is to be a Gine, then you got other problems on your hand. If you're in the Haitian Voodoo. Haitian Voodoo. There's a lot of things that in this work is unraveled. When you're around uh, someone who has done the work and who has unraveled, etc., etc., there's something that you're going to realize when you're around a true, true developed master teacher, like true, 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 is that when you're around that individual... When you're around that person, what you find is that that person's energy is very calm, peaceful, or blank, zeroed out. Meaning, it's zeroed out. There's like, it's like a space. Or it's very calm, peaceful, and positive. What springs forward from someone who's truly developed, okay, is life. We give life. That's the truth. Okay? Because when you're really in alignment with your mystery, you're really serving the purpose, 
Okay, and you are a true Guinea. You truly unraveled. Okay, you have that for real. You are a fountain. And people can drink because the supply is endless. This, the supply comes from a mystical world, from the spirit. But when you're not, you have jealousy, you have dramas, you have fear, conspiracies, paranoia, gossip, hate. When you're in alignment with the spirit, nothing but peace, love can really spring from you. Does that mean that there's never any war? No. Sometimes to reach peace or love, it's war that gets it there. Everything is appropriate. But there is a fountain. And there is a space. Okay? A true leader is not disturbed. You may be disturbed, but we are not. So, that's on the personal end. Now, bringing that forward, because that's what we do here. We bring things forward. Bringing that forward into doing spiritual work for others. If you're not even capable of spiritually really doing spiritual work for yourself because you have, you're not unraveling, so on and so forth, you want to double check yourself about doing spiritual work for others. Doing spiritual work for others is dangerous. Not only is it dangerous and harmful to others, but it's also harmful and dangerous to yourself. First off, you're creating basically negative repercussions for yourself. When you improperly guide someone, when you improperly do work for them, and when you do improper ritual and work, you create negative force for yourself, debt, which you will have to pay one way or another. And... I know and seen a lot of spiritual workers paying these debts. And they're wondering why what's going wrong with them is going wrong. It's very simple. When you're doing things outside of what you're capable of, you're going to create spiritual debt, which you will pay one way or another. A stain on your soul, which will have to get cleansed one way or another. Not only that, but that person following improper guidance, getting improper work, and then finding themselves with more problems and harm, they lose faith. They lose their strength. They just end up with more shit. And you misrepresent the spirits. And that has a cost. When you misrepresent the spirit, expect you will pay for that. Okay? As Papa Ogu says, there's no infraction that's not repaid. There's nothing that you will do that the scale will not work to balance itself out. So when you're improperly guiding people and doing work for people, and that person is going down the wrong path as a result, having other issues and problems as a result, okay, you will as a result also sooner or later. Talde o temprano. Yes, I speak lots of languages. Mix them all up. Creole, Spanish, English. Sooner or later, you're going to pay for that. And 
there's lots of people carrying a lot of heaviness, a lot of weight, a lot of backlash. And they think that just because the spirits will continue to work and deal with you, that they aren't themselves the cause of your problems. Yes, this, the same way that you do good with one hand and ill with the other, so will the spirit handle you. If your intent in helping others is anything other than serving the spirit, you should not be helping others. So if your intention in helping others is to help other people, then you should not be helping people. What? Yeah. It's a tricky one, isn't it? I'll explain it. If your intent is to make other people's lives better, then you should not be doing work for the uh, other people. If your intent is to make people X, Y, or Z, to help them, anything, you should not be doing the work. <clears throat> because you, you, okay, are but an instrument and a vessel for the work if, if you have that capacity, your intent should always be to serve the spirits. If your intent is to serve the spirits, the spirits help that person. But if your intent is to help people, then what happens? That gets intertwined with ego. With you feeling like you're someone important because you can help people. The truth is, without the spirits, you can't do it. Okay, maybe you might be able to help people a smidgen. The truth is, your job is to serve the spirits. So if your intent is to make money, if your intent is to help others, if your intent is to make people's lives better, if your intent is to make more happiness, if your intent is to, you know, teach people lessons, if your intent is to make a spiritual house, a business, so on and so on and so forth, show your abilities, then you are not meant to be doing the spiritual work for others. And if you have those intents, there's nothing wrong with that. I just played a double trick right here on you. I know. But if you have those intents, there's nothing wrong with that. You can have those intents. But you should not have those intents and serve other people. If you have those intents, there's nothing wrong with having them. That's what it is. However, what that tells you is you have a lot more spiritual work to do before serving others is ever going to show up on your plate. Now... One of the things I said is, if your intent is to help other people, then you should not be serving people. Why? Why did I say that? Because when your intent becomes tied into helping others, then you decide, okay, your focus is no longer the spirit. Then you decide what that help should look like, what that help should be. If they receive help or not, it's on your ego. But if the intent is to serve the spirits, okay, then you can be assured that that person will receive what they need and the purpose will be served. A lot of people carry that intent to help others. And that's a good guideline. Right? That's a good way to check yourself. But truly, the intent should be to serve the spirit. You should not be serving others unless you have the capacity. The capacity is not given to you by you yourself. The authority is not given to you by you yourself. Just because people come and ask you for help doesn't mean you're the person to help them. People can come and ask you to do a surgery for them, but doesn't mean you can. 
people can come and ask you for all kinds of things doesn't mean you can or you should and doesn't mean that it was meant for it to happen for you you can meet someone at the bar and they could ask you to fix their car it doesn't automatically mean it was meant to be just because earlier that day you learned how to change the oil on your car Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is, if your intention is for anything other than serving the spirit, then you're going to be malaligned. Because ultimately, ultimately, it's the spirit who commands. And when you start mixing up your intent in the spiritual work, your intent, other than your purpose, which is to serve the spirits. Okay? So what I'm saying here, without saying it, but I'm just going to tell you direct because some people can't read between the lines, is if you're meant to serve others, then your purpose is to serve the spirits. You drop the intent. You have no intention. You only have a purpose, which is to serve the spirits. And that means serving the spirits at the capacity at which you are, where you're at, what you can actually do. Because if not, you take the problems onto yourself, you take issues onto yourself when you give bad guidance you end up having issues yourself. Okay? Not only that, but then you harm all that person and all the rest of the spiritual workers that that person will ever interact with. We gotta clean up the crap you made. We gotta clean up the shit mess. It's just the way it works. And that person will hold it against the spirits and we'll hold it against us. I've seen it throughout the many years. And then we have to clean it up. We have to pick that person back up out the ground. And we have to do a whole hell of a lot more work to get that person right. To get their life right again. And it's not fair to you. And it's not fair to the person. And it's not fair to us. And definitely not fair to the spirits. But it's not fair to you. If you're selfish, use your selfishness. Why? Because you're the one going to be carrying the debt and repaying that debt one way or another. So why put yourself in that predicament? So this leads us to the question, well... If I'm not meant to do the spiritual work for others, then why am I meant to do the spiritual work? It's to serve the spirits, but what does serving the spirits do for me? Okay? Serving the spirits will change your life. If you really want to serve the spirits, be a walking beacon of the spirits. Be a representative. Okay? That's one way you can serve. Through your character, your mind, your emotions, your actions, your mind, your heart, your actions, your body, the way that you socialize and treat and interact with people, be a servant of the spirits. Two, another way that you can serve the spirits is to let people know that your life has been transformed by the spirits and take those people, connect those people to people who could actually help them. If you have capacity to help them at some level and you've really been authorized for that, go ahead and do that. But then eventually take that person to someone who can actually help them if you are not that person. Who can actually unravel them and give them what they need in their life and in their development 
and has the knowledge and the wisdom, the connaissance, the not the wisdom to really take that person where they need to be. Don't go above and beyond what you are actually capable of. No one will look at you any differently. In fact, we'll look at you with appreciation because you know when to stop. <clears throat> Thirdly, develop your relationship and your powers. Develop your relationship with your spirits and develop your spiritual powers. That's what's going to bring you a lot of benefit in your life. So do that for yourself. Again. Benefit from it and be a beacon. Be a walking representative of it. I don't know what number I'm on. I think five. Is if you are called to serve people in a greater way. In another way. Not greater, in another way. To serve people with the spirits. Doing readings, doing spiritual work for people. Get the proper training, knowledge, rituals, ceremonies, protections that you need in order to do that. So develop that capacity properly. And always remember your job is to serve the spirits, however that be. Make sure that you're not Coming in with intentions. Come in with a purpose. To serve your purpose. Which is to serve the spirits. Which means to serve in whatever way or capacity you've been called to serve. Making sure that you have what it takes to do that properly and safely. Because that means that you're also well representing our spiritual work, which is the great work, the sacred work. The truth is that very few people understand this, that in our tradition, okay, in our spiritual work, if you go to the right teacher who actually can teach you these secrets, we have the capacity to transform people, transform men into gods, gods over their own life. Okay? And we have the capacity to bring you total peace, tranquility, and bliss in your life, joy and happiness, consistently and permanently. But unfortunately, there's... Very, 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 very few who can do this for you. That there's a higher chance that you're going to end up with the majority of quote unquote, you know, spiritual workers. And I'm not saying that they don't do spiritual work, they do spiritual work, they do magic. But that doesn't unite you with the great mystery of God. And bring you total peace, power, happiness, bliss, and satisfaction. We can and we know how to do that. We know how to cross the divide. We know how to make you whole again. Make you one. Bring you complete and total wholeness and power. But. You have to decide that your purpose is to serve the spirits and really follow someone, get a mentor, have your mentor, your teacher, your godparent who has that capacity. So that's all for today's podcast. Just as a, s- a small an- announcement, this weekend, October 27th, 2018, we're actually doing our Sansa initiations as well as um, our ancestral white table seance. Tickets are still available. 
The seance is October 27, 2018 in West Berlin, New Jersey. Tickets are still available. You can email us, help at greatestspells.com or help at mysticalwork.com, Facebook me, whatever. Tickets are still available probably till Friday. You could also pay at the door if you want to come. Make sure that you hit me up. Secondly, if there's any topics you would like me to discuss, first off, I want to thank one of our listeners for giving me this topic. But second off, if there's any topics that you would like me to discuss, feel free to let us know. I love to discuss topics you want to hear. Lastly, God bless you. Keep safe. Keep well. We're coming up on the full moon and on the Feast of St. Raphael. So, blessings to you on both. And we'll speak soon. Keep the faith. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app. Free for iOS and Android.